96 Lexus ES300 with a six cylinder 1MZ FE engine. We've got a check engine light and a trouble code of P0301, which is a misfire on cylinder number one. One of the more common reasons for a misfire is a bad coil pack, and that's also one of the easiest things to check. So that's where I'm gonna start. On this car, the odd number cylinders are in the back. One, three, five. Even numbers are in the front, two, four, six. And even though it's a six cylinder, there are only three coil packs, which means each one of these coil packs supplies the spark to two cylinders. This pack supplies cylinder two and cylinder five, which is a back right corner. So that's where this plug wire leads. This one does four and one. One is on the back left corner. This is where our misfire is. This one does six and three. So this plug wire leads back around to the middle to cylinder three. I'm gonna swap this coil pack, which I have marked with an X, so I don't lose track of the one that may be bad. I'm gonna swap this to cylinder six, and if the misfire, which is now on cylinder one, if it changes to cylinder three, then I know that this coil pack, which will then be over here, this pack is bad. If the misfire stays on cylinder one, then I know that the coil pack is not the problem. There's another issue. The plug wires are new. I don't suspect them as being the problem. The plugs are new. I don't suspect them either. I already have it all loose just to save time. There's a little clip on the bottom of each plug wire. Undo those. There's a 10 millimeter bolt on each one of the coil packs. There's a wiring harness and a tab that you press down. This one broke, which is very common for older cars. The plastic dries out and becomes brittle. This one did not break. Get that one off. Just pull it up off the plug. Swap them around. And this should still go on pretty tight even though it doesn't snap into place. these bolts tightened down. The next thing I need to do is clear the trouble code. I need to clear out that PO301. I'm going to do that by disconnecting the negative battery cable for about one minute. Then I'll put it back on. It's been about a minute, so I'm going to reconnect the battery. Doing that should have cleared the check engine light, so now I'm starting fresh. So I'm going to fire it up, drive around the neighborhood a little bit until the check engine light comes back on, and then we'll read the code and see if it moved from cylinder one to cylinder three. Check engine light should be gone, which it is. Misfire is still there, I can feel it. I got a trip meter set just so we can see how long it takes. All right, there it is, 1.4 miles. It should stop flashing in a second, stay solid. And there we go. Now let's read the new code and see if that misfire moved from cylinder one to cylinder three. I don't have to go to AutoZone to do that. I bought my own code reader. And I noticed also on that test drive that my tachometer is not working. So that's something else I got to figure out. This particular model, it's a C Reader 3001. It was recommended by Scotty Kilmer on his channel. So I'm just going to plug it in and figure it out. There's the connection right there that we plugged the scanner into. Turn the ignition on to the second position. But don't start the car. Diagnose. Read the codes, yes. And even after swapping the ignition coils, the misfire stayed on cylinder one. So the coil is not the problem. Got to keep looking. The next thing I want to check is the fuel injector. I'm going to check the resistance. According to this, all Lexus engines between 1990 and 2000, mine's a 96. The resistance should be between 13.4 and 14.2 ohms. And you know it's ohms because there's the omega symbol right there. That's at 68 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's about 92 right now, so it might be a little bit off from this range. I'm going to check the resistance using this multimeter. I want to look for the omega symbol right there. I want to set it to 200 ohms. Let's do cylinder two first. I've already taken the wiring harness off. Just squeeze this tab and pull straight up. And it doesn't matter which color it goes on which pin. We're looking for 13.4 to 14.2. And we got 15.6, which is close. Remember, those ranges were at 68 degrees and it's 92. So that might be the cause for the difference. Let's do another one on the front row. Let's see if we get 15 point something. 15.4. So these two are very close. Now let's check out cylinder one. Cylinder one's right down here, the light blue again. Here's the wiring harness, it came off the same way as the others. I have a lead on each one of these pins and we got nothing on the multimeter. So this fuel injector on cylinder one is dead. Now to make sure that I have power coming through the wiring harness to the fuel injector, I have my multimeter set to DCV 200. I have the ignition turned on to the second position. I'm gonna take the black probe and ground it against the valve cover and try to hold the wiring harness with that same hand, we should see somewhere around 12 volts. And I got 11.9. So there is power going through the wiring harness getting to the fuel injector. It's the fuel injector that's bad. And of course it would be one of the cylinders in the back. Much more difficult to get to. Here's the new fuel injector. First thing I wanna do is test the resistance and we got 15.4. 
very close to the resistance on the two that we checked on the car. So this should work. Now I just have to get it installed. I have to take out the intake plenum, the throttle body, the airbox assembly, the wiring harness leading to the front fuel rail. All that has to come off. And before you get started, I would suggest that you take a lot of pictures front, back, right, left, where all the vacuum lines go, where the wiring harnesses go. Makes it a lot easier when you're putting it back together. First thing I'm going to do is disconnect the negative battery cable. That'll de-energize everything and I won't have to worry about an electrical spark. I'm using this piece of cardboard to help keep me organized so that I know what fastener goes back where. It took me about an hour to get all that off. If you need to know how to do that step by step, look for a link down below in the description to a video by Speedcar99. In his video, he'll show you step by step how to do what I just did. So here's the rear fuel rail that has to come off. Fuel injector for cylinder ones right here. This 14 millimeter banjo bolt has to come off. And you can see I have a rag underneath to catch any gas that may leak out. A little bit leaked out, not too much. At this end of the fuel rail, I'm honestly not exactly sure what I'm looking at. There's a 23 millimeter bolt right here, and I put a wrench on that, put a pretty good bit of tension on it, but it didn't want to break loose. So I'm scared if I put more force, I'm going to break something here. What I'm going to do, because this is a flexible fuel line here that runs between the two rails, take a 12 millimeter bolt off of this bracket that holds this fuel line in place. I believe after doing that and taking off two 10 millimeter mounting bolts on the fuel rail, I should be able to lift that rear fuel rail up. Let me take these two 10 millimeter bolts off the rear fuel rail and then see if I have any play in it, if I can move it at all. Now, let me see how much play I got in it. I was able to pull the rear fuel rail up enough to get the cylinder one injector free. So I'm gonna pull just that one out and there's the bad one. And with that bad fuel injector off the car, let's test it one more time to be sure. It is definitely dead. I saw a lot of suggestions about what to lube the new O-rings with. One thing that many people suggested was white lithium grease. So that's what I'm gonna go with. A light coating of that grease. And I'm gonna try to reinstall this without disturbing the other two any more than they have been. I'm gonna wipe off the surface where that grommet's gonna mate. Push the new injector up into the rail first. And now push all three injectors back into place. I've got both of those 10 millimeter bolts back on the bracket holding it down. So it's in there. Question is, is it going to leak? Now the 12 millimeter bolt for the bracket that holds the fuel line in place. Get that 14 millimeter banjo bolt back in. I'm going to reconnect the wiring harnesses. Now I'm going to reconnect the negative battery cable, put the key into ignition, turn it to the on position, which will prime the fuel pump. And if we have a leak, we should see it. That's what I've read. I've never done this before. So let's see. All right. Batteries reconnected. All right. Keys in the on position. I do not see any leaks. That's the only thing that I know to do to test it before you put everything back together. So that's what I'm going to do. Put it back together, crank it up, see what happens. I also replaced my PCV valve and grommet. It's on the back left corner of the rear valve cover. I bought the grommet and the valve at AutoZone. It was about seven bucks. The wiring harness for cylinder six, the one where the tab broke off, I'm going to put a zip tie on there just to hold that securely so it won't come off. Now let me clear up all my tools and let's start it up. Everything's bone dry. All three fuel injectors on that rear bank, they're dry. The fuel rail is dry. So I got lucky fixing it the way I did. I know that. The big question is, does that bolt right there back off? This is on the rear fuel rail on the driver's side. The other side, the passenger side, has the banjo bolt. That comes off easy. That looks like a bolt, a 23 millimeter bolt. And I did put this wrench on it and put a lot of pressure, but it didn't budge. And that was after putting penetrating oil on it also. So if you need to replace a fuel injector on cylinder one, you might be able to do it the same way I did. If it's cylinder three or five injector that's bad, you're going to have to figure out how do you get that rear fuel rail off? Does that bolt back off? All right, road test before I call it fixed. 
reset a trip meter. Hopefully that check engine light won't come back on. Last time the check engine light tripped to 1.4 miles. This time I've driven eight. I topped off with fuel, went to Walmart, got some bottled water and non-perishables because Hurricane Dorian is on the way. So I'm getting ready for that. Also got some propane. But as far as the car goes, it appears that it is successfully repaired. And the mileage should be at about 53. Yeah, 53. I started at 45, now I'm at 53. Just so you know, I'm not fudging it. And tachometer's working for some reason. I don't think the two would be related. The tachometer just must be an intermittent thing. Eight mile road trip, no check engine light, no misfire. So that's a good thing. Check down below for some links to parts that I used and parts that I didn't use. These are O-rings that I was going to replace on cylinders 3 and 5, but as you saw, I didn't take those fuel injectors out, so I didn't use the O-rings. I'll put a link to the aftermarket fuel injector I used. That was $27.75. And another link to the video that showed me how to take the top part of the engine apart to get to the rear fuel rail. Hope this helps you out, and if you made it to the end, thanks for watching.